You can't be afraid to communicate. Then you don't have to like everybody to be successful and to be in a partnership or to be on a team with that person. It doesn't mean you have to like me to respect me. <laughs> That's it, man. Yeah, I want I want to ask you because you know you get to the you get to the pros, right? And you're, you're on the, you're, you got you got Elway, Romanowski, Atwater, Shannon Sharp, you know Mike Schlereth, who's working on NFL Network these days. Right. Matt Smith, you get all these top performers, players. You know you get, you get drafted to to to, the Detroit, to Detroit. You know, and you get all these players are, are the best of the best, physically gifted. They got drafted. Boom. How, how did you go about dealing with egos? How did you how did you how did you manage uh, egos to to say, hey guys, let's win a championship? Right. Well, see, here's the thing: it, it's it's not necessarily about managing egos. It, it's really about just managing people, and and I say it, it's a it's a collective thing. It it really has everybody's going because here's the thing: when people say manage egos, that almost has a negative connotation. That almost says that you have to tame people. You know what I'm saying? That you have to bring people down or you know, when you say manage ease, I want you to have an ego. I want you right, to right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because I need that. I I need you next to me cocky and confident yeah. and, and ready to do Heck your yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. But but what I all but I what I need is is respect within that. You know, respect within that. There's a time and a place for all of our egos to exist. We just have to understand when that time is. Yeah. You know, we, we can't, you can't just display all that testosterone and all that ego for no reason, you know. So for us, it was about managing people and coexisting. Yeah. And the only way you get to manage people is to communicate. It's to get to know. You can't be afraid to get to know a person. Like for me, I, I always, and I was, you know, fortunate enough to be a captain in high school, college, and the pros on the Super Bowl teams. I was a captain. So for me, I would always take my guys out and, and, yep. and I want to see what, what makes you tick. Yep. It doesn't mean I'm going to like everybody. And mm -hmm. that's what people don't understand. You don't have to like everybody to be successful and to be in a partnership or to be on a team with that person. You just mm -hmm. have to respect everybody. Yeah. I respected everybody that, that was on our team. I respected everybody that I talked to, I spoke with, and I, and, and I communicated. I was not – it's kind of like where we are now as a world. Yep. Kind of like where we are now as a world. Racism and all this stuff that we're talking about, that is really about people. It ain't, it's not about black or white. It's about people in general. Mm -hmm. And then and the bottom line is you can't be afraid to communicate. You can't be afraid to have the tough conversations because it doesn't mean you have to like me to respect me. <laughs> you know, I'm mm -hmm. like, and the way you get to like someone, the way you get to respect somebody is to, is to communicate with them. So that's that's what we did with with our egos, with with who we were, with our black white, with our being straight or gay because there were gay people in the league at that time, you know. Hey, yeah. There were white people, there were blacks, there were Mexicans, there were and there, there were uh Nico Nogas and all those guys from Hawaii, you know. We had <laughs> you know, there was a plethora of of guys with different backgrounds and different religions and all of that stuff. So you just respected it, you know what I'm saying? I remember my one of my best friends to this day is Darian Gordon. You know, he changed his name to Jamal, but you know he, he was, you know, his religion was different. You know, he was a Muslim. Got so, it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So it was one of those things where I respected him, though. You know what I'm saying? When he was in his locker playing to, with the whole of Quran or whatever, I respected that, and, and I didn't make fun of it or I didn't, you know. But we communicated about it, yeah. which was so cool. Was that because to me. I feel there's nothing gained from communication but knowledge. There's just really no, there's really no loss there. There's really nothing you, unless you go into it with a different mindset. You know, in order to, to get along with people and in, in order to relate to people, you have to first and foremost, I always keep going back to you. Yeah. <laughs> you have to well, open your own mindset. Was, know, there, not, was there a certain expectation? For example, you line up on your guys. Was there a certain expectation you had of each other? Was the expectation to be at the meetings on time, to be in the workout rooms, to make sure they're diet? Did you have some minimum expectation that you expected amongst each other? And if, if they didn't meet those expectations, how did you call them out? Yeah, if you did. and that's the whole thing is that we had to make sure we had expectations of, 
across the board. Yeah. You know, there were no expectations for anyone that that wasn't for anyone else. You know what I'm saying? Now, don't get me wrong. <laughs> People got treated differently. John Elway, even I'll be honest, even myself, John Elway, Steve Atwater, Shannon Shaw, Terrell Davis, myself. Oh, there were some things we got to do that some of the <laughs> other players didn't get to do. <laughs> you well, know? you guys are going above and beyond. That's it. Yeah, but you're, 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 you're flag carrying for your team. Yeah, you have to understand the guys they depended on the most got, you know, relaxed, you know, treatment. But even us, whoever we were, there were expectations. We were going to be on time. Now, that kind of stuff was stuff that you don't tolerate. There has to be a, a there has to be a guideline that everyone falls into. Okay. Everyone. And then you play your way into better situations. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> better treatment. You play your way into days off. Like for me and John Elway and Shannon, training camp. I only had to practice. Like we had two days. I only practiced once a day. <laughs> but I played my way into that. Sure. It's, it wasn't you know, for your first year. Yeah, exactly. That wasn't something that granted, that granted to me when I first got to Denver. I took three days in Denver when I first got there. But by my second, third year, and they knew they could trust that I was going to be on time. They knew they could trust that I could go to Dallas because I didn't even, I didn't work out in Denver. I came home every offseason. I came to Dallas. But Shanahan didn't allow that my first year. Yeah. He made me – I had to stay in Denver. Yeah. But once he saw my work ethic, he said, you know what, Ray, go home. Go to Dallas because I know for 14 years straight, when I showed up at camp, training camp, Shame. I was 185 pounds. I was 7.2, 7.3% body fat. 14 years straight. That's what I was. You know what I'm saying? Book it. That's what I was. Right now, today. Now, my body fat has changed, but I'm 185 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, man. Now, look. The body fat is shifted. The weight is still the same. The weight is still the same. same. But, so it's, that's the kind of things, you know, those are the expectations. You know, you you in your character, you build certain things. Yep. And you have certain guidelines that everyone must follow. Yep. But then after those guidelines, like you said, be on time, 110% effort. You know, Knowing what the hell you're supposed to do. Being mentally astute. You know what I'm saying? All those things come into play respecting the person next to you doing your job you know doing your job because everybody understands this is not basketball where michael jordan can take over a game football is quite different at any given moment if you decide that you don't want to do your job the play is messed up because we got to cover 50 yeah. <laughs> plus here and 120 here and it's gonna be <laughs> obvious you didn't do your job it's obvious, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because every man, you got to think about it. There's 11 guys on a field. So basically, if you are the, if, if you are, are like me, if you into numbers and, and math and things of that nature, you break a field down. Yeah. So when you say, if there's six guys in the front, or, or let's just say there's five guys in the front line, right? Yep. And there's seven guys here, and there's four guys. You got 15 feet wide and this distance to cover you got and if you're not there it's open it's oh, obvious you're not quarterback sees that now opening it's obvious that you're not so that's why it comes you know into do that's why the Patriots had this big do your job because yeah. it's going to be obvious in if that you did yeah. it's different in business sometimes yeah. you know that guy who was supposed to fax those things sometimes he can get away with not doing it because yeah. football is different gotcha. you can't get away with not doing your job Sure. It's got to be done. If you're offensive tackle and you're not blocking, the world's going to know. No, yeah. the quarterback <laughs> get hit. Your okay? quarterback will have some choice words for you. Um, there you go. Yeah. So so those guidelines, you have to set base guidelines that everybody from everybody has to follow. Base guidelines. And then you work your way into everything else, good or bad. Because you can work your look. You can work your way into something bad. If you're not doing your job, not doing enough work, you got to be at the stadium more. You got to be in the film room more. You got to be on the field more. You know what I'm saying? So you can yeah. work your way into good or bad situations.